What's up guys, Brad here. In this video, I wanna talk about why room correction seems to destroy the base in your home theater, why you may wanna consider using a house curve, and also when you maybe shouldn't use a house curve. Oh, and also a bit about Odyssey's Dynamic EQ. Let's get into it. Now, I know that may have seemed like a lot of stuff in the intro there, but all of those things are really tied together and I think are worth talking about in order to better understand how it all kind of coalesces. Now, I'll try to break it down so it's easy to understand how they all work together so you can make a decision about which route you may want to go in hopes that you'll be on the road to getting better bass and overall audio from your home theater. Now, this will be more or less a talking head video with little to no B-roll or cutaway shots, so feel free to just minimize this video or listen to it in the background if you want. Now, before we go any further, if you're new to the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell icon so you never miss out whenever I upload a new video. Also, you'll find links in the description below to calibration tools I'd recommend checking out, along with some other goodies like links to my full home theater setup. Now, for those that aren't aware, what is a house curve anyway? Well, doing a quick Google search in the top result from css-audio.com tells us that it's an EQ setting to make your speakers sound better in your room. Okay, um, great. Then that explains all you need to know. My work here is done. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I'm kidding, obviously. To put it simply, a house curve, which is frequently talked about in regards to subwoofers and bass, more so than the full frequency range of your speakers, is basically a boost or increase in output in a specific range of frequencies. Then the output starts to slope down to a point where it is in line with your main speaker. So for example, you may wanna boost all the frequencies between 20 and 30 hertz by 10 decibels, then have it slope down to meet the output of your speakers around 100 hertz. This particular house curve is one of the most common and popular house curves for subwoofers that I know of, and it is what I personally use in my home theater. Now, I wanna run a scenario by you that I think many people are familiar with from those just starting out in the hobby to those who've been in the audio game or home theater for a while. So you set everything up, your receiver, speakers, subwoofer, you don't run Odyssey or any type of room correction and instead just set distances manually and maybe use an SPL app on your phone or SPL meter to level match all your speakers and subwoofers. You may listen to it for a while, maybe a year or a few months and are really digging how it sounds. Then one day you think, hey, I never ran Odyssey. So you go through your receiver's room correction process and once it's done, you go to listen to your favorite song or favorite demo scene from a movie. And well, everything sounds like crap. It lacks that fullness. It sounds thin, especially in terms of bass. The bass seems almost non-existent unless you really crank the volume up loud, which isn't ideal. And at this point, you either start tinkering with some settings in the receiver to try and get back to that full and rich sound you had before, or you just disable room correction and go back to how you had it all set up in the first place and say, hey, screw Odyssey. Sound familiar? Well, it's happened to me and it's maybe happened to you too. Why did Odyssey take that bass out and make everything sound so thin? Well, in reality, it actually did exactly what it's supposed to do. It simply tried to make your subwoofer's response flat across the board, meaning that a tone at a really low frequency, like 30 hertz, will be the same volume or level as a tone at 100 hertz. And that's great, right? Because a flat response is what you want from your subwoofer, correct? Well, yes. Kind of. Well, at reference level or zero dB on a lot of receivers, and that's pretty freaking loud for most people. Not many people listen at reference level because it's just so uncomfortably loud. So you turn down the volume to a more moderate level, say minus 15 dB, and in doing so, the bass seems to nearly disappear because of the way our ears perceive it at a lower volume level. This is really the root of the problem here and is why you might feel that room correction destroyed any type of bass response you had previously. Now, before I move on to talk about house curves, Odyssey already has something in place to deal with this very thing called dynamic EQ, and you may have heard of it. And what it does is it boosts both the bass and surround channels more and more as you lower the volume away from reference level in order to compensate for how our ears and brain react to lower volume sound, especially bass and sounds behind us. Now I've done a few videos on dynamic EQ and while I don't personally use it as I find it to be a bit too heavy handed in its approach to both bass and surround levels, it is a pretty quick and easy way to get an okay-ish house curve added to your subwoofer just by turning the setting on as long as you don't mind the boost in surround levels. But what if you want more control over your bass but also don't want that boost in the surround channels that dynamic EQ adds? 
Well, then this is where you may want to consider adding a house curve to your subwoofer manually, and there are a couple of ways to go about it. Though, if I'm being completely honest here, most are not free and also require an investment in time as well. You could use the Odyssey Multi EQ Editor app if your receiver supports it, which costs around $20, and I made a video on doing it this way that you can check out in the card above. Now, you can also go the more expensive route with a Mini DSP 2x4 HD, which will give you much more control of up to four subs, but it is a bit pricey at around $200, and you will also need some type of measurement microphone and a computer to use it. Now, I have done a full video tutorial series on this as well, which you can also check out in the card above, as well as a link at the end of the video to that playlist. Now, I mentioned in the intro that there may be times when you may not want to use a house curve, so why wouldn't you want to use one? Well, first off, if you plan on using dynamic EQ or something similar, then you probably shouldn't use a house curve. I'll, I'll explain. Like I mentioned earlier, dynamic EQ essentially adds a house curve to your subwoofer and boosts it up anyway. So having it do that on top of a house curve that you do manually will lead to bass that will more than likely completely overpower every other speaker in your system. It will sound bloated and overbearing most of the time and can actually lead to your subwoofer or subwoofers performing much worse than they should be as that kind of output needs lots of power. But hey, if you like that and enjoy bass headache, then by all means, go for it. Now the same goes for if you're listening at reference level. You probably don't need a house curve here as well. A flat response at reference level will sound balanced and natural with plenty of bass even after Odyssey does its thing. Just be aware that it can be ear piercingly loud in smaller rooms. Here it would actually be easier to simply boost the subwoofer by uh, two to four decibels if you want a little extra output, provided your subwoofer can handle it. I think it's also worth mentioning that there aren't any set in stone rules. What you prefer and what you think sounds good in your room is ultimately what it all comes down to. I didn't make this video to tell you, hey, you're doing it wrong or to dissuade you from trying something out. My only hope and intention with this video is you come away with a better understanding of how some aspects of your home theater work and potential ways to get better sound out of it. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up as it helps the algorithm do something. I, I don't really know what it does. If you have any questions about what I covered in this video or if you use a house curve or use dynamic EQ and wanna share your experience with others, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.